everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Bari and in today's video I'm going to be doing a full review of the Samsung Galaxy Folder 2. So without further ado, let's begin. So the Samsung Galaxy Folder 2 is a smartphone slash flip phone which was originally released back in July 2017. The phone was released in select countries within the Asian region such as South Korea, China, Malaysia and the Philippines. The phone comes in five different colours which include the standard black and white models as well as wine red, gold and burgundy. So in previous videos that I've done featuring these two phones, a lot of people have asked me questions, mainly in terms of where I purchased the phones and accessories from, as well as features in relation to using the phone. Now, of course, I am going to be answering as much of these questions as possible, especially as since in case you're unable to scroll through the comments, then all necessary details will be cleared up. So for the black model that I have here, I originally purchased this from eBay for £157.10. and This phone is second hand and was shipped directly to me from South Korea without any additional delivery charges. During the time of purchase, the back cover that I originally had for this phone was scratched and broken, so I also purchased a genuine Samsung Galaxy Folder 2 back cover via eBay. As for this white model, I purchased it for around £167 via eBay and with this particular model it was a lot harder to find because since the phone has gone viral on sites like YouTube, TikTok, etc, it sells out quick. I also had to pay additional duties and taxes of around £37-£40 from FedEx for this particular model but luckily within the next few months I was able to get a hold of it. In terms of the additional accessories you can clearly see that I have some stickers on here from AliExpress and of course these are the same stickers that I'm using on the black model. The only thing is that the colour fades out in the black model whereas the gold stands out a lot more. I also have clear cases for both these phones and two separate keychains which I purchased for around five to six pounds from Etsy. For the white model I have this cute little rainbow bunny keychain and then the black model has a wand styled keychain. Aside from the clear cases, stickers and keychains, I also managed to get a hold of some film screen protectors. This is how the screen protector looks on the black model. And then here is the screen protector for the white model. I think I applied it a little bit better on the white one, but the reason I had to purchase the film screen protector was because at the time tampered glass was sadly not available for these particular phones. So to start off, the black model has the original 2017 design and as you can see you have the Samsung logo placed at the top of the front cover and then you have this notification light which shines if the phone is charging or if the phone has any new messages or other notifications from various apps. The white model does have a more updated design. Now with this particular model I'm not entirely sure if this design came out in 2017 but it might have been a year or two later although it's hard to tell. I'm not really sure if the camera is focusing very well but you can clearly see that there is a slight gradient effect which goes from light grey to white. Unlike the black model, the white model has the Samsung logo on the bottom of the front cover and you have a notification light here as well which serves the same purpose to notify you of any new messages or if the phone is charging. As for the backs of both phones, you can clearly see that both have slightly different covers with the Samsung logo raised a bit higher for the black model in comparison to the white. Both phones come with 8 megapixel cameras that also support flash 
And then on the right hand side of both cameras, you have an additional speaker grill for audio and video based files. The cameras do have slightly different designs. So the black model has a black border with a pattern around the lens. And then the white model also has a silver border and a circular look inside the lens. Now one complaint I do have about the design of the phone is the position of the camera. When I used the black model abroad, I did have to hold the phone in a sort of closed fist motion like so, with the keychain being placed at the front. This is because the fingers were often obscuring the camera when I was taking photos or recording video, so I kind of had to ensure that nothing was blocking it. Now one thing I do like about the design of these particular phones is the fact that there is a removable back cover as well as a removable battery. Nowadays a lot of modern smartphones are glued together with adhesive and the problem is if you have to get them fixed, unless you have the tools or the know-how, you find yourself paying quite a bit of money in a repair shop. So it's pretty simple to remove the back cover as there is a little bit of a slot here that you just push your finger through. You do have to be a bit careful just because the back cover can be a bit flimsy at times since it's thin and made of plastic. Now inside the back, you do have a hole where you can insert keychains. So whenever you have a keychain with a little strap, you just have to feed it through the hole and then put it over the hook so that the keychain is neatly attached. So this is the battery that is included with the phone and it's 1950 milliamp hours. The battery is small but from personal experience of using the phone for two weeks I was able to get about two to three days of use without charge. I did have a spare battery so should in case I never had access to a nearby charging port I could just take out the dead battery and put the fully charged spare back in. So aside from the battery you also have two separate trays so you have a micro SD card tray where you can insert an SD card that goes up to one terabyte and as you can see I do have a 128 gigabyte SD card which I used in a previous camera that I'm selling as I tend to have SD cards lying around pretty often at home and then there's a micro SIM card which you can use to insert your SIM. I did use my EE SIM during my time abroad for two weeks, that was before I was going away from my home country, and I was able to make and receive calls as well as messages. Now keep in mind that if you do want to use the phone for calls and messages and you want to use any old SIM card, an unlocked model is required because if you get a carrier locked model, this will be tethered to one specific carrier slash network. Now some people have asked about sims from other networks slash carriers like at and I'm not entirely sure if this particular phone would work with those carriers and that's mainly because carriers like at and don't exist in the UK. So we have EE which is like T-Mobile and Orange put together, we've got O2, Vodafone etc so any American network providers or other network providers abroad I'm not 100% sure but I assume that the sim should work okay as long as it's a micro sim then it will fit inside so I'm just going to put the battery back in and I'm going to show you the rest of the design it's also pretty easy to just snap the cover back on So as for the rest of the design, the phone has a charging port. I believe this is USB 2.0 or 3.0, but please feel free to correct me if you know. But anyway, these are the charging ports and they are used to obviously charge the phone or you can connect it to an external device like a computer or a laptop. On the left hand side, you have volume rockers which are used to turn the volume up and down for audio. And then there is nothing much on the right hand side besides the holes for the keychains. 
Another complaint I do have about this particular phone is the fact that a headphone jack doesn't exist. If you want to use the phone to listen to various types of audio, Bluetooth headphones or earphones are required. In the case of the Galaxy Buds, I did test these. So on the left hand side, these are my Galaxy Buds FE, which are my main earphones. And then on the right are my Buds 2 Pro. Sadly, these particular Galaxy Buds will not work with the Folder 2 because these Buds have newer software and the software for the Folder 2 is incompatible. I also have my Galaxy Watch 5, which I tried to test with the phone and of course it is turned off. And again, the Galaxy Watch 5 does not work with Galaxy Wearable on the Folder 2 because of software differences. I'm not entirely sure which Galaxy watch models will work with this particular phone, but I assume anything from the original Galaxy watch to the watch 2 or 3 should be okay. I do have my original Buds Plus in the colour cloud blue, so I've had these since December 2019 and I was planning on selling them, but then I tested these with Galaxy Wearable and they work fine with the Galaxy Folder 2. In the case of other Galaxy Buds models, the original Buds as well as Buds Live are supported for the Galaxy Folder 2, but anything newer will not work. So I'm going to show you the rest of the design of this phone. So this is how the black model looks when it's open, and then here is the white model. Both phones do have a similar design, but again, there are some slight differences. So you can clearly see, for example, the Samsung logo is not on the white model. And the white model has a circular navigation key with a silver border, whereas the black model has a square navigation key. So using the black model, I'm just going to go through how the phone looks when it's open and what kind of things are on the particular design. It might be a bit hard to see as the phone is switched on, but you have another speaker grill as well as a notification light and a two megapixel selfie camera. And then this is the physical keyboard, at least for the black version of this phone. The physical keyboard is pretty typical. So this is what you would normally expect on a flip phone, but you do have a few unique keys exclusive to the folder too. So the keys that you have include the app drawer key as well as the home button key and the back key. And then you have the navigation key should in case you don't want to use the touch screen to navigate through the phone. You also have the contacts key, which is mapped to the contacts app, the messages key for the messages app, the camera key for the camera app, and then what is called a social key. Now I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the social key on the white model as my black model does not have social media apps. So to use the social key, you just press and hold and then you can see a list of frequently used social media apps that you can assign to the key. You can also assign non-social media apps, but as you can see here, I do have Instagram assigned. So when I'm just clicking on the key, I am straight into Instagram. I haven't really used my Instagram account as much because I don't use a lot of social media nowadays, but when I am on Instagram, I tend to post art rather than do things on here besides that. So yeah. As you can see as well, you do have some Korean social media apps that you can install. Some of these might come pre-installed, but it might depend on the model of the folder too that you have. You also have some extra keys. So you have the accept and decline call key. And this key here is also used to power the phone on and off. Then you have this unique key here, which acts like a back key. So whenever you are typing using the actual keyboard, you can use this particular key to go back and erase text. I'm just going to quickly demonstrate just so you have an idea. But as you can see, I'm pressing the unique Korean key to erase some previous texts that are typed on Samsung Notes. And that was when I was testing the keyboard. Aside from those keys, you have the rest of the physical keyboard, which you can use to dial numbers or to type. 
Then you have the star key, which can also be used to change between the keyboards. So again, I'm just going to demonstrate this using Samsung Notes. You have four different keyboards that you can choose from. So you have the numbers keyboard, which allows you to dial numbers. Then you have a symbol keyboard. So each number is assigned to a different symbol. And when you scroll through, you've got quite a few options you can choose from. So if say I go to option seven of seven and I choose two, then I get a arrow pointing to the left hand side. You have a third keyboard, which is typically the Chunjin keyboard used to type in Korean, but I don't use that keyboard at all. And then you have a fourth keyboard, which you can use to pretty much type in any language of your choice. So because I'm from the UK, I'm using English UK. You can use English US if you're from the US, or if English in general is not your first language, you can choose your home language using the keyboard settings in settings. You also have an emoji keyboard for different emojis. And as you can see here, these are what the emojis look like via Samsung TouchWiz. The emojis here are very different compared to what you now have in One UI, especially because there are limited options. But then again, this phone came out in 2017 with Android 6.0.1. You also have the hash key here. So this is just used as a spacebar for when you're typing and it's pretty self-explanatory. So now that I've explained all the keys and everything, I'm just going to sort of show you my apps on both phones. There isn't much on the black phone because I use this phone kind of like a dumb phone. And then the white model, I have some social media and entertainment apps, but I'm just going to go through some of what I use, the software, launchers, etc. So this is my current setup on the black version of the Folder 2. And these are all the apps that I have, which mainly consist of the pre-installed Samsung apps, as well as some third-party apps for productivity purposes, etc. So you may notice that I'm not using the default launcher here. And before I get to why, I'm just going to quickly show you what software I'm using on both phones. So the software that is currently on this phone at the moment is Android 6.0.1, aka Android Marshmallow. Now, Android 6.0.1 from personal experience was a bit jarring to use because when I took this phone abroad with me, I was coming from One UI 5.1, which I have gotten used to over the past couple of years, ever since I first downloaded Android 9 aka Pi on my Note 8 back in, I think it was 2019, if I'm not wrong. Now, I used to use Android 6.0.1 with my Galaxy S6 as a college student. So in a sense, this particular software brings some nostalgia for me just because I loved it on my S6. But going back to it, I did realize there were certain features that didn't exist, such as S Pen support, as this does not support styluses really and also the widget stack which is pretty useful when I want to access quick widgets for example but otherwise I was able to use the phone perfectly fine. Now the modern number that I have on here is SMG160N it's the same model number for my white folder 2 as well. So the default launcher that comes pre-installed on here is Samsung TouchWiz so for me personally, Samsung TouchWiz is very jarring to use as it can be hard to navigate on such a small phone. So I downloaded a third party launcher called Nova Launcher, which was previously available on the Google Play Store at the time I downloaded. But once I got the white model, I could no longer download Nova Launcher as it wasn't supported. So I had to use an external site called APK Mirror, which is what I normally use when I'm downloading third party apps or older versions of Samsung apps that are normally not supported. The icon pack that I'm using on here is called Crayon and I purchased this from Google Play for £1.8. So I'm not really going to go through too much of the apps, but these are all 
the practical ones that I have. So I think what I'm probably going to do instead is just go through the apps on the white model, at least the ones that don't contain as much personal information. Now normally there would be more pre-installed Samsung apps, but I did use an external process via web ADB to uninstall the apps that you can only disable because I'm one of those people that does not like bloatware on Samsung phones. So certain apps like Facebook, the majority of Google apps I don't use, hence why I do external methods to uninstall. But when it comes to using external methods to uninstall apps, it's kind of a do it at your own risk thing. The same applies to downgrading software, which I have done before on previous Samsung phones. Not that I've tried on these anyway, because I don't think it's possible. So these are the apps that I have on the white model, and this is my setup. So I'm using Nova Launcher again, but this time the icon pack I'm using is called Chic Pastel. I think this was 99p from the Google Play Store. I can't really remember, but I don't know why. I do prefer these apps with this particular icon pack a little more, just because it fits the overall aesthetic of the phone. So I do have quite a few more apps on here, but most of what I have here is kind of like pre-installed Samsung apps and practical apps that I normally use on a regular basis. So I'm just going to go through a few of these apps just to show you an idea of what I have. I'm not really going to go through things like my contacts and messages just because there's personal information on there. But most of the other apps I'll go through, I probably won't go through Money Plus either, but we'll see. So I have AdGuard Content Blocker, so this is an app that I use to block third party apps when using the internet. I also have Audible, as I have recently been getting into listening to audiobooks. So one thing I've been trying to do more often is reading and listening to podcasts and audiobooks that contain useful information. So at the moment, the main audiobook that I have been listening to Great. is called The then Escape by C.L. Taylor. So recently I've been getting into sort of audiobooks relating to thriller, mystery, fiction, finance and mental health. So when I listen to audiobooks, it's mostly when I'm at work or if I'm travelling to work or just travelling anywhere else. And I think I've listened to more than 20 audiobooks this year, although I do want to read physical books more often. I also have the Calculator app, which is pretty straightforward. There's nothing really special about this particular app, but when you turn it around, you do have a few more features in landscape mode. And then of course there's the camera app and as per mentioned there is a key that is assigned to this particular app but I will be showing some images that I took on the phone that is just to test it and I will be comparing those images shortly with my S22 Ultra. I also have the clock so it's again pretty straightforward. You've got the alarm, which I don't use as I have a physical alarm clock. You have the world clock where you can set to different times, stopwatch, timer, etc. And I also have Davio on here, which is an app that I use to record my mental health and overall moods. Now the data on here is not updated because this isn't my main phone, my S22 Ultra is, so all of my updated stuff is on there. But this is a modded version I have which gives me access to all the premium features. And these are all my recent-ish mood counts, goals, etc. from July, but again, I don't have updated data on here. And then there's the Galaxy Store as well, so this is pretty straightforward. 
You can download apps, themes, etc. Well, not really themes because sadly the Galaxy Theme Store is not supported with this particular phone. So in the case of themes, these actually are fonts that you can get. So I am using a custom font on this phone because I hate the default Samsung ones. And this is the font I'm using, which I purchased for £1.38 on the Galaxy Store. And then there is also the Galaxy Wearable app, which I primarily use for the Galaxy Buds Plus. So if I just get my Galaxy Buds Plus, then I can just press that is if it will allow me to do so and then hopefully I would be able to get this set up with this particular phone. I have set these up with my black folder too when I was abroad although I'm not really sure if they would work with this one but it should as it's essentially the same phone. So I'm just trying to set it up to see if it works at the moment. If not, then I suppose I'll just have to leave it for now. And then I also have Hema. So this is a Korean journaling app, which I use to write short journal entries in case I don't feel like writing in my other journaling app. You can also review movies, television shows and books, and again, this isn't updated as my S22 Ultra has all of my data. So this I kind of left off from July or August, I don't really remember. And then of course, we're going back to Instagram. I don't really use it often, but I do have an account that I use to post mainly my art. But I do have a few favourite pieces on here. This is one that I did this year using a combination of my S22 Ultra and my iPad. So I was following a tutorial from Giundi, who is a YouTuber I'm subscribed to that does Medibang paint tutorials. So I tried this out and I have to say it came out quite decently. And this is a painting style I'm going to try to experiment with more often. This, I think, took me about three to four days, probably around four days to do from scratch. You can follow my Instagram if you choose to. So my Instagram account is Bree.su. It's also in my channel's bio if you wish to click on it. But as per mentioned, I don't really post as much on social media. So the last time I really went on here was probably in like, September or something. And then I have the internet, but that's pretty straightforward, so no need to explain it so much. And then this is Journey. So recently I have been searching for a journaling app that I can use to not only journal, but to also write goals and follow templates. And with this particular journaling app, you know, I have been using it quite often to document memories of places I go to as well. So as of uni, I've been getting into journaling mainly because I have clinical depression. So this kind of helps me write my thoughts and stuff down. And then I have the Kindle app as well on here. So I use this to read all my eBooks. Unfortunately, I cannot download ebooks directly through the app anymore, so if I want to download and purchase, it has to be done online. These are some ebooks that I did read within the past year or so, but I just kind of kept them as references if I ever choose to go back to them. I do read comics online as well, so one recent one I've read is the Scott Pilgrim comic. I just haven't seen the 2010 movie yet though, but I've seen the Netflix adaptation. And then I have Google Maps and Messages Money Plus, which I use to budget when it comes to my expenses. So because I have too many accounts, I usually like to keep track of everything in one. 
and it's just easier for me to manage my finances that way. I do have the Netflix app as well, so I share this with my mum. And I've had Netflix since I think 2020 because initially I had it as a college student, then I couldn't afford it, then I went back to having it again. So, you know, recently I watched the You Hack Show Netflix adaptation, but I can't really say I would recommend it just because it was too fast in terms of pacing. Sorry, let me just see if I could get the camera to focus properly because it's having some difficulties. But this is kind of how Netflix Back looks. So, so it's decent quality for Back such a small screen. Then we have Nova settings and phone also got the Play Store here and you know most of these apps I guess are pretty self-explanatory and then we also have S Planner as well so this is how S Planner looks on the folder 2 it's very basic and the only things that are recorded on here are the moon calendar events public holidays and public holidays in Korea as well so I'm just going to quickly show how the calendar looks on my S22 Ultra just because I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison if that makes sense. So this is the calendar on my S22 Ultra, this is the calendar on the Folder 2 and the S22 Ultra one is very vibrant and I have all my stickers because I'm one of those people that likes to make my calendar extra by putting stickers on everything. And then we also have some additional apps here. So I have Spotify on here. This is a modded version that I use. So I have access to premium. It is a bit slow on here sometimes, but it works as intended. And I mostly use it to listen to music or podcasts nowadays, especially mental health podcasts, as I have been interested in that particular subject. So these are all the items in terms of playlists, artists, etc. I do have a Spotify account, but I don't really post anything on it per se. And then I have Tachiyomi on here as well. So I also use this to read manga comics. It's not updated because the data is again on my main phone. But this is how it looks, as you can see here. So this is You Hack Show, and I did somewhat reread it when I was going abroad. But you have to say the quality is pretty decent, and should in case you want to go to a specific panel, you can just sort of zoom in, especially if you want to read the text. And then I have YouTube on here as well. At one point, I did have YouTube advanced, but I had to get rid of it because it no longer worked. But again, it works pretty decently on here. Before I show the images that I've taken on my camera, I just want to quickly mention if I would recommend this particular phone to you guys as a daily driver. Now, in my personal opinion, the Galaxy Fold 2, in a sense, can be used as more of a minimalist phone. So I would definitely say that if you are a person who maybe wants to have a phone with basic functions rather than distractions, then yes, I would recommend this. Now, although you can download social media on the Folder 2, like messaging apps and such, 
you don't really have to keep them on there. In fact, you can delete social media and just literally use the phone as a dumb phone. So like what I have done with my black folder two, I have no social media on this whatsoever. I just have the basics and messaging apps are the exception and WhatsApp as well. But otherwise I have the basics kindle audible spotify that kind of thing that is if you ever are interested in making this phone into a dumb phone now one thing i would say in terms of storage as well is if you are looking for a lot of internal storage then the 32 gigabyte option is the best one so you do have two storage options which i forgot to mention earlier so you have the 16 gigabyte model which is what the black model has this one has 32 gigabytes, but again, you have the SD card, but for internal, 32 gigabytes is obviously going to be the better option. Now, if you do choose to use this phone as a daily driver, keep in mind that it's not going to be the fastest phone because the software is Android 6.0.1, which came out in 2015. So obviously it is not going to be the fastest. But otherwise, I would say if you want a basic phone for daily use, then yeah, give this a try.